What's going on everybody, Jay Howe here, and in this Diablo 3 wizard build, we are going to cover the top build in Season 9 and Patch 2.4.3. Now for the gameplay, I actually was able to hook up with the number one player on the leaderboard in Season 9, and basically in the previous era as well. He's number two on the non-season, number one on the seasonal leaderboard. So he brought in his knowledge. I'm going to go ahead and put the build guide for you. You can check out some of the gameplay as well, but I'm going to cover the skills that Gear and everything you need to know to make this build work for you. So one quick thing before we touch on the skills is to know that this is a Tau Rasha build and so therefore you're going to see different skills that have different elements for a reason to be able to proc that on the Tau Rasha's build. Now for the skills, we're going to be looking at Arcane Torrent with Static Discharge. This is going to be kind of the follow-up damage you do whenever you're not in that Archon form. And this is just going to be something you throw out and we'll go over the next few skills because you're going to use those first. And that's going to be Energy Twister with Mistral Breeze. And the thing about this one is that it's cold, therefore you're proccing the cold element, and that just plays into the Tal Rashes. You're not going to be spending a lot of times casting skills if you've spec'd your gear appropriately, so you're only going to use this one or two times before you're in between your Archon. Next up, Black Hole with Spell Steel. This fills in the Archon role. It increases your damage, it reduces damage from enemies. Now, during the gameplay, he ended up going with a Teleport build here, but to clear the high greater rifts he's going with black hole to get that extra damage and it plays directly into the tal rashes as well next the cream of the crop archon with combustion you're going to pick this and archon is where you're going to be at all of the time and that's the biggest thing about this is that you pick this and then you're basically in that archon form going absolutely bananas and this is where the majority of your damage about 90 to 95 percent of your time should be spent in archon form Next up, Magic Weapon with Deflection. When you perform an attack, you get that protective shield that absorbs some of your life. And when you're in high greater rifts, you need that extra protection. And speaking of that extra protection, Energy Armor with Force Armor. Incoming attacks that would deal more than 35% of your max life are reduced, and therefore adding some extra damage mitigation. Now, when we move to the passives, the very first passive we talk about is actually going to be supplemented by a ring that you're going to be wearing as well. And we need to talk about the gear when we get there to make sure that you are getting that lightning damage. Now, Paralysis says that lightning spells have a 15% chance to stun all targets hit for 1.5 seconds. This is going to pair well with the mantled heal, which we'll get into here in just a second. But this is absolutely vital to make this work. Unstable Anomaly, it basically gives you that extra life, a really key thing to make sure this build works. And at high greater rifts, you're likely going to take some damage that will kill you at some point, but to have that extra life is a pretty big deal. Next up, Power Hungry, you deal an 30% additional damage to enemies further than 30 yards away. You are going to be distancing yourself from enemies and just going to town with that Archon, trying to get that beam out. And when you're not in Archon form, you're still going to be at range. It's just really good to have that big damage there at the end. Evocation, another 100% necessary passive to have, reducing cooldowns by 20%. And you are going to need a lot of cooldown reduction to make this work. All right, so now we're going to look at the gear, and to start off, we're going to look at the weapon, which is the Starfire. Lightning damage is increased by anywhere between 10 to 15% for every 10 yards you are away from the target, up to a maximum of 40 yards. And we already talked about lightning damage is going to be what you're specking into. We talked about paralysis. We talked about more lightning damage. This is just going to be the thing that you're going to use to be able to do that max damage. Another thing is you want to make sure that you have cooldown reduction on your weapon, and basically you're going to need cooldown reduction on every item that you can get it on outside of the amulet but make sure you also have it on your weapon before we get into the set bonuses we'll take a look at some of the other gear because Ransler's folly we already talked about how you'll be using the energy twister and to be able to pull enemies in to get that easy aoe damage and to keep them off of you the energy twister is going to help there same for your black hole with the spell steel it's to keep enemies away from you group them up and to do that aoe damage also make sure that you spec lightning damage on your bracers you need to make sure that you have lightning damage on there also crit hit chance intelligence and vitality would help as well for the belt fazula's improbable chain anytime you run any type of archon build this has to be a number one starter to start with those extra archon stacks when entering archon form means that your damage grows exponentially pretty easily and so it's really easy to say that this is the number one choice for your belt 
for your jewelry, the Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, because it has that cooldown reduction in it, normally you get that extra attack speed as well. Those are two things that are going to synergize really well with this build, but Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, a must-have as well to get that cooldown reduction. For your other ring, I kind of alluded to this already, the Mantled Healed. It says enemies stunned with paralysis take up to 14,000% weapon damage as lightning. And you are going to be hitting hard and fast, and you're going to be proccing this. And this is a really big deal to make sure that you have this. Also, you want to make sure and have cooldown reduction on this item as well. Again, cooldown reduction on every item you can get it on outside of the amulet. So when we move to the set gear, first we'll take a look at Veers, and that is going to be easy to get. You need four pieces, but you need three essentially because you're going to be using the Ring of Royal Grandeur, but you need to be able to get the set bonuses. The Archon gains the effect of every rune is the two piece, and then the four piece. Archon stacks also increase your attack speed, armor, and resistances by 1%. That's a pretty big deal to make sure and stay alive and to do more damage at those higher levels, so it's good to have that. You can see different ways to do this with your gear. Obviously, you want to have the better pieces. But again, when it comes to your gloves and your shoulders, make sure you have cooldown reduction on both of those items. As far as the Tal Rasha set, you're definitely going to need to have the amulet because you want to have the six-piece bonus of Tal Rasha. So the amulet is definitely going to make this work. You also have to have the offhand, which again, you can get cooldown reduction on your offhand as well. But having the six-piece bonus to where the two-piece bonus damaging enemies with each different element will cause a meteor of the same damage type. That's going to help the four-piece bonus, the six-piece bonus all around increasing your damage with the Tal Rajas. It's so impactful to make this build work, to have the full six-piece Tal Rajas and the four-piece Veers. It's just great synergy. We talked about the skills. We talked about the new Mantled Hild, Hild that's basically there doing more damage, the paralysis. All the different things that you're doing now revolve around that, but it revolves around the lightning damage, which goes back to the bracers. So everything that I've said... This is one of the hardest builds to gear for because of the cooldown reduction, because of the pieces that you need. There's really no room to waver. So as we move over to Kanai's cube, the furnace is going to be the weapon slot. Increases damage against the elites by 50%. And this is actually a pretty big deal because in greater rifts, you're not necessarily going to skip right over them as the wizard. It's okay to engage them and to kill them. And you'll find that if you play this build appropriately, they don't stay alive for very long. So the furnace really helps speed up those greater rifts. As far as the armor slot goes, the Swami. The bonuses from Archon stacks now last for 20 seconds after Archon expires. Because you should be back into Archon form pretty quickly, especially if you have that high cooldown reduction, the Swami will get full value. You'll be able to amp that damage when you're outside of Archon form, blow up a bunch of people, get right back into Archon form, and continue to do work. Now, I already talked about the jewelry slot, Ring of Royal Grandeur. To be able to hit that Veers and Tal Rasha set bonus, you have to have the Ring of Royal Grandeur in your cube to make that work. So when we talk about the legendary gems, the Bane of the Trapped is a really good start. We already talked about how you're going to be using Rancler's Folly and then, of course, Spell Steal. You get that damage, that amplify damage for enemies that are CC'd. That's going to help. Now, we talked about Starfire, and that increases damage when you're at max range or when you're further away. So that actually synergizes really well to continue to do range damage with a gem like Xyze Stone. To be able to do that extra damage to enemies that are further away from you, it's a really good synergy gem to have with this build lastly bane of the stricken each attack you make against an enemy and we already know what this does it does the extra damage against bosses and rift guardians and because at high greater rifts you will spend more time killing individual enemies than you will at le lower levels so bane of the stricken is a number one choice so that's going to do it for this Diablo 3 video. You can check out Yoda on his stream as he does stream both Heroes of the Storm and Diablo. He's obviously one of the top players in both games, so very knowledgeable person. Also, you can check out some of the other builds that are available on the channel. And be sure and subscribe if you're looking for more Diablo 3 content in the future. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, happy hunting. See you again.